Hi, Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, and I'm the co-founder, chief medical officer, and executive vice president of the nonprofit CLL Society. And today I'm going to be presenting some important papers for the American Society of Clinical Oncology, or ASCO's 2022 annual meeting. The paper we're going to talk about now is entitled Survival Outcomes in patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia treated at academic centers. And I'm going to give a brief patient-friendly synopsis of this. Let's start with the bottom line. CLL patients treated at academic centers live longer than those treated at non-academic centers. But, and it's a big but, the data were confounded by significant demographic and socioeconomic variations between the CLL patients treated at the academic and non-academic centers. Who did the research and where was it presented? Dr. Victoria Vardell and her colleagues at the Huntsman Cancer Institute in Salt Lake City, Utah, presented the results at the American Society of Clinical Oncology's annual meeting in Chicago in 2022. What were her methods and participants? The National Cancer Database was used to identify CLL patients diagnosed between 2004 and 2018. And the results? Almost 100,000 patients were involved in this analysis. The actual number was 98,186. One out of three were treated at academic centers. Generally, the ones treated at academic centers were younger, 67 as the average age versus 71 at the non-academic centers. At the academic centers, they were more likely to treat blacks and other minorities, with black patients representing 9.7% of the patients at the academic centers versus 6.3 in the community. Academic centers were more likely to treat non-academic centers uh, patients who had private insurance, 39% versus 30%, but they were also more likely to see patients who were uninsured, 3.2% versus 2%, and patients on Medicaid, 4.1% versus 2.9%. Academic centers cared for patients, uh, more patients from the highest economic groups and from the highest educational groups when compared to the uh, other centers. Academic centers were also more likely to manage patients with active observation or watch and wait. They did it 53.7%, where it was only done 45% uh, percent of the time in the non-academic centers. So what did we find in terms of the survival? Ac uh, with a median uh, follow-up of 4.3 years, median overall survival at academic centers was significantly improved with non-academic centers, with an overall survival of 11 years versus 8.2 years, respectively. So almost a three-year advantage of living longer. And when we dive into the numbers, if we look at what was the survival likelihood at five years, if you were an academic center, it was 73%. If you weren't, it was 66%. At 10 years, it was 53% uh, at the academic center versus 43%. They did a multivariate analysis to figure out and to adjust for age and comorbidity. Uh, and they found that management of CLL patients at academic centers was in itself an independent risk factor for overall, better overall survival. So let's look at our conclusions and comments on this. This is a large study, and there were a significant socioeconomic and demographic differences between the CLL patients that were coming to the academic centers for their care and the non-academic centers. But there was a significant improved overall survival for CL patients managed at the university centers, suggesting possible differences in treatment, including a higher percentage of patients that are managed by active observation or watch and wait, perhaps better clinical trial availability at the universities was a factor, and maybe there's more support care management 
Maybe these are all factors in why the survival is better. This documented and impressive survival advantage in receiving expert care is not new news. Ten years ago, Dr. Tate Shanafeld at a Mayo Clinic reported a similar survival advantage in seeing a CLL expert. CLL Society is committed to closing this gap so that survival odds are not influenced by geography or insurance or economic status. We want to see a time that all patients, regardless of where they live or what their insurance is, can access an expert. And through our educational services on our website and through our webinars and other activities, become their own best advocates. We give you a link to the uh, actual trial. Um, uh, its title is Survival Outcomes in Patients with Chronic Lymphocytical Chemia Treated at Academic Centers. We also provide a link for you to our second opinion program. This is a free program called Ask the Expert that provides access to a CLL expert to anyone in the USA who might otherwise not have such access. We also help you build your team with a link called CLL Team. Our motto is smart patients get smart care. And one of the smartest things you can do is to get expert care. Thanks for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together.